wraiths are are pretty good, but the, uh, they don't quite stand up to a scorpion. The wraiths have a cool plasma burn special ability, though. The, the covenant grunts have things like sticky grenades. You know, all the things that the fans would expect. But again, kind of in that the primary secondary nature that we've characterized everything. Um, so this is kind of a big force here. Maybe we can call in one of the carpet bombs from our Spirit of Fire. So again, pulling up this, this simple circle menu, mm -hmm. Justin can press A to, to anchor it, and then you, you drag the analog stick around to decide which air, which direction you want your carpet bomb in. Yeah, some, some hardcore death and destruction there. Ca caught a few friendlies in that one, so you don't want to, want to do that too often. But um, it, it, that, that really kind of capsulizes Halo Wars in a nutshell. Um, we can do maybe a Mac, a Mac Blast on this other uh, group coming in. Uh, and so these are powers that you're asking the Spirit of Fire to, to call down for you. It's kind of, Mac is sort of like a sniper rifle, whereas uh, the carpet bomb is more like a grenade. So they have different strategic uses and things like that. So we have the units are all on the right side and the up upgrades are all on the left side. The Marines have one of the coolest upgrades. They can turn their grenades into rocket propelled grenades. Spartans have uh, also you know, many of the Arnold-like upgrades that you expect. They can go from the dual wheel to a chain gun, mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually even the Spartan laser. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the bonuses that the Spartans confer upon the units they get in ties to the unit's level. Uh, it's a little bit hardcore, but uh, each unit has a level that's the summation of his veterancy and his upgrades. Mm -hmm. And so the Spartan then confers that upgrade or that level onto the unit he gets into. So if you have a level five scorpion and you put a level six Spartan in it, now you have the level 11 scorpion. If you don't spend time managing your battle and deploying those troops on the right things, you're gonna get your, your butt handed to you pretty quickly. The, with the abilities that are attached to each unit, it reminds me a lot of the kind of micromanagement that was introduced in Warcraft 3, where even if you had a somewhat inferior force, you had to micromanage your units and you could still overcome somebody who wasn't really paying attention to their combat. Right, so uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was to bring dexterity to mm -hmm. strategy games. This is actually the battle-torn, nuclear war, or win winter-cleansed uh, harvest. Mm. So if you're familiar with uh, the lore and the canon, you know, that uh, the harvest is the, the farm world for the UNSC, and it was one of the, actually where the first contact with the Covenant was, and they cleansed the crap out of it and blew it all up. And so this is sort of after nuclear winter has set in, and. So Justin's just built an elephant, which if you've played Halo 3, that's a, a nod to that. Uh, Size-wise, ours is a little bit different in size just for scale, but the elephant is Captain Cutter's unique unit, uh, and it's kind of a mobile barracks. It can deploy itself here, and then we can train uh, Marines and Spartans and Flame Marines out of it. Can you use the sniper tower? Uh, yeah, actually Justin can pop in that. And so the sniper towers give them a huge combat advantage. So we, we down that elite in no time flat once we're yeah. up there. So you know, like a strategy game, uh, game would expect there are lots of ways to invest in areas around the map. We didn't exactly specifically mention it yet, but there is a single resource in Halo Wars mm. called supplies. Yeah, ensemble fans are probably freaking out when they hear that. <laughs> you know, our, our games have always had really robust economies. So kind of one of the hallmarks for a PC RTS anyway is that there's always an ability to add more onto it. Have you guys made any plans for downloadable content to expand the universe? Uh, we did, actually. I would be beheaded if I talked about them. <laughs> um, so Justin's uh, taking control here of the Forerunner Supply Elevator, or <coughs> otherwise affectionately known as the Supply Pooper. <laughs> uh, and it'll spit out supplies, and so this is an area where I can, I can you know, de deploy my Marines in the sniper towers and try to hold it. But this is a pretty contested area on the map because it's free supplies. Mm -hmm. And so one strategy is to run over there quickly, take out the, the bad guys guarding it, and take control of that and, and maybe not build any supply pads in your base. That's also pretty risky because if you lose that, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be out of the game. But you know, we want those, those, those choices in the, in the game. And, uh, getting that, that map investment in the, in the game is huge for a strategy game. And those types of special little map-specific things are, are on each map that you have. <laughs> So we're playing against the uh, Prophet of Regret here. He's one of the Covenant leaders. Um, and so we have the mini map, we have your population, your tech level, your resources. The UI up in the upper left hand corner is not normally there. We added it for E3 so people could play the game. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when Halo first came out, it was. It wasn't the first FPS that was ever on a console, right. but it certainly defined the control scheme for what came afterward. Exactly. And uh, 
So is that the same type of thing that you're trying to do for RTS on console? Do you see people looking at Halo Wars and then thinking to themselves, well, this, I want to make an RTS on a console, I'm going to copy this control scheme? Um, I would, sure. I think, <laughs> you know, it's, how, how would we not want that? It, we certainly, I think, still think of RTS on the, on the console as an untapped genre. Right. So now our profit's been upgraded, he's got some cool things going on too. He'll probably bring down the cleansing beam here shortly. Oh, so there's the cleansing beam. This is what the Covenant have used to glass the planet, uh, if you're familiar with the lore. So they're using it to glass our army, which uh, Justin is obliging all to <laughs> uh, That also can be upgraded. Um, this is the, the early version. You can upgrade it to something that's even much more cataclysmic than that. Mm. Do you think you'd be able to come back from this one, Justin? I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, I can guarantee you the balance guys are not going to let him move it down. <laughs>